Hello and welcome to our game. Hickle Verney played in that All Ireland final back in 2007. Eight, yeah, eight. eight. 2008. Uh, I've been there as well with Kula. So we said, why not bring out some of the gear? This is actually the top that I wore um, on the bench, definitely in 2018, before coming on. Before coming on. Uh, would that have been your gear from back in the day? No, uh, it's funny. I, I looked at the jersey from 08 recently enough, and it's amazing how fashion changes <laughs> because this thing was swimming on me. It's nearly down to my knees, but it's amazing how that was in fashion at the time. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of kind of good memories. Is my only time playing with Burr and Crow Park. Um, we didn't win, but it was an experience nonetheless. Padre Wheelett famously came over to me on the field after, and I was definitely, um, I wouldn't say. I wasn't definitely one of our worst players anyway, and he just pat patted me on the shoulder and said, "Passed your boy, Vern," which was a lo which was a lovely um a lovely sentiment after losing your losing your first All Ireland club hurling final. Jesus, that had to hurt. That was yeah. Well, like my, the first one that I played in was the one that ended up in a draw after extra time with Napierzig, and it was just you know you're just so. I think the occasion just takes so much out of you, and that's what these players going into this weekend that they're coming up against. Like Kilku were here a couple of years ago. And a lot of their players have played on the big stage with Down, so they know about that. Rory O'Carroll is one of those that has played in an All Ireland club final before in 2008, winning it. I suppose the same day as you were there. I don't know, actually. Do you have any memory of that? Because I remember the first year we came out for the warm up. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the first year. Maybe it was the second year. You might remember with Cara Finn. I was looking. We were walking around the pitch, and I looked up at the scoreboard, and Cara Finn were already hammering Nemo. So that game was kind of done. So that would be my one memory of whatever happened in the football that day. To the best of my knowledge, it was the same the day we were playing. I, I don't know, was that the day Dermot Connolly announced himself? Uh, no, I, I'm thinking Vincent's well, were playing Vincent, in 08. Uh, Ken McCood was 09. And I think Connolly had a big score put up. But it's it's so... In, we were after him beaten. We went over to the players' lounge and it was just so insignificant like it was just like it was it didn't it was absolutely meaningless like i fairly sure we talked in the cusick and walked around to the hogan but when you're after being beaten it's all you know it's all such a blur i that's the first time i've even thought about that in about what 14 years you just you know the way something negative just is kind of parked out of your brain you just don't think about it. but it was all just a bit of a blur after yeah and that, what they're after is these old things here, Michael Verney. There's plenty of them in your club, but there's not too many of them in your house. No, that's awful, isn't it? And like, Jay's, if someone wanted to get bitter with you around the town, they could easily just throw the how many I learned in club medals have you got at you if they wanted to. Do you know what uh, they often say? You know, you ask these players and they've won everything. You, you say to them, Do you ever stop and think about what you've won? And they're like, Oh, I'll do that at the end of my career. To be honest, I haven't. That's just sitting there. The great, you know the way they often say, oh, my mammy has me medals there somewhere. They're probably in a, sh in, a, in a press or up. The dirt on this, if you see the grime all over that, it is uh, tis a disgrace. Um, but anyway, we have Richard Hogan asking, is it hurling or football up first? It's going to be hurling on this show. We've so much planned for it. I mean, Ballygunner against Ballyhale Shamrocks has so many different storylines. Never mind the fact that the Reeds and the Mahonies are cousins from up the road from each other. Funny enough, Shane, Stephen O'Keefe uh, said yesterday that he had no idea that they were related. Can you believe that? That, that? that you wouldn't even be conscious of it? I suppose it would. I mean, it could happen. Yeah, you could see how it happened. Do you know, like, everyone on your team who their cousins are? I mean... Yeah, but you'd imagine, like, when you have famous cousins, like, as in the Mahonies are related to the Reeds and TJ is one of the greatest hurlers of all time, you'd think it might have came up in conversation. Yeah, but uh, but obviously not. Anyway, and what else do we have on the on the playlist for today? Well, we're going to be looking at the record hall of medals that some of these players have, um, have. Like, going all the way back to 2007, Bally Hale have some players who are still in operation at the moment. We look at the match they had in 2019 and the player changeover. We're going to bring bring it up a tactics board. I'll just bring it up here just as a little bit of a teaser. But we're going to be going through all of this. We're going to break down who's going to be playing what position, what sort of matchups we're expecting that will happen in this game, and how the teams will try to play the ball in. So get your comments in on that. We're always mad to hear what you think on that because we definitely don't have all the answers. But hopefully we'll have one or two. Um, as I said, tactics board. We're going to be looking at the fact that the managers, James Joxer O'Connor and Darrow Sullivan, that they're friends. We have a full round of league stuff to talk about, Michael Verney. There's so much happening in the Intercounty this weekend. Yeah, there's a load, of, a load of league matches on this weekend. It's funny, uh, because the club is on Saturday, I don't really think anyone will be thinking about the league until Saturday evening, really. I think uh, um, I, I saw a couple of people saying on Twitter that the, the club finals should have the central billing on the Sunday. And I probably do agree, because I think that's the one thing of the year. But 
they have a fairly strong billing on Saturday and nobody's even considering really the league games until after. Like, I'll put it to you this way. When was the last, like, what's the last biggest hurling club game, we'll say, that you have looked forward to? Like you're looking forward to the match this Saturday. Like Bally Gunner, Bally Hale, we did power rankings at any stage over the past two years. They would have been probably one and two. And you're getting the dream match in the dream venue for both teams. It's set up to be an absolute belter of a game. Oh, like this has got, like this could be potentially the greatest club game of all time. And like we, we've had some pretty cracking ones in the last few years, semi-finals or finals. Like it's, is it as big as Ballyhale and Port Humna was all those years ago in terms of like people were really looking forward to this? I mean, yeah, I, I think it has to be up there. That's the only game I can compare it to. And as we were saying to Johnny Kelly there recently, he was obviously what involved. About our game against the Piercing? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> not for you. <laughs> not not for me, no. Obviously for you. But um, that was like, you know, that was down in Turles. And I remember we all went down as a family just to see it even. It was that big of a game. Like it was just a neutral's dream as well. Um, but I can't remember a game in the you know intervening period that I look forward to as much where I didn't have skin in the game. You're obviously going yeah. to say Kula or Boris. Uh, the Burr games I would have looked forward to. There's so many big ones. One with Atten Rye down at Cusick Park in a semi final in 03, but you have skin in the game there. This is you know the real litmus test of a game, I suppose, is how interesting, how keen are you for it when you're just a neutral and you can just sit back and enjoy it. And this yeah. is you know, this Saturday is an absolute dream. I'd say I'm looking forward to Kilku against Kilmacud almost as much, pretty much just as much. I think that'll be a cracker. But just for the, the inter-county stuff that's happening this weekend, we're going to be talking about, like, this will be Henry Shefflin's first time up against John Kiley. I think that's quite tasty in itself. Clare against Wexford, like, it had that edge with Davy Fitz the last couple of years. He's not involved, but we that that's a good game. Can Wexford back it up and can Clare bounce back from the loss to Cork? Your Offaly will be hosting Cork. Antrim against Dublin. Waterford are going to be up against Leash. Funnily enough, the Bennett brothers between them have scored four penalties in competitive action this week. Uh, Tipperary against Kilkenny. Colin Bonner and Brian Cody have been coming up against each other. I, was trying, I couldn't quite find team sheets, but I think Brian Cody retired from playing with Kilkenny right around the time, or there might have been a year or two overlap of when Colin Bonner made his debut for Tipperary. And there is a league game there around 1985, that neck of the woods, and I'm wondering, did they play against each other? Obviously, in more recent times with Bonner over Wexford and Carlo, they have come up against each other. But this they've time, even come up against each other, Shane. I'd say when Bonner was with Bally Hale against the village, even when Cody was involved in the village. So this is going on club and county, I'd say, for a long time. Yeah, and you know what? I, I I happened to look up some. You know, I went into Sports File and Info to look up photos to see if I could find out. You know, where were they pictured together? That, that might give me an extra clue. And they were at the um, one of those championship launches in two thousand and nine. There's a few pictures of them against the, like there seems to be a bit of a, you know the way sometimes from a photo you can get an idea of, oh, these two boys respect each other or whatever. There seems to be a bit of cordiality between them. I definitely got that sense. So I'd, say, I'd say Cody would have had plenty of dealings with Bonner during his Waterford IT days as well, with like trying to get Owen Murphy released or find out who was the, you know, who should be here when JJ was playing with Waterford IT as well. Like they would have, I'm sure they would have had conversations down through the years. And it's just funny. Hurling and GA is so funny like that. You can be having a relationship with a guy at third level and you're not really thinking, I'm going to come up against this lad. He's going to be training the county we hate the most. <laughs> and we're going to be playing each other in a league game and potentially a championship game. Well, look, this is the nerdy level of GA we're going to be talking for the next while. As I said, we're going to be talking about the All-Ireland Club football final. We'll be doing a Gaelic football power rankings, just picking our top 10 there because we don't have all day to go through all 30 odd teams we're also going to look at the Sigerson Cup and we'll probably reference the Fitzgibbon Cup also right so let's get down and dirty by the way if you're watching on Twitter or on YouTube the first 15 minutes will be free to watch the rest of it you have to go to patreon.com forward slash our game we'll have the link underneath uh, but patreon.com forward slash our game we'll be shutting the, this stream off after 15 minutes and that's where you can watch the rest of it so Michael Verney Bally Gunner against Bally Hale Shamrocks the three in a row bid for the All-Ireland against a team looking to win their first ever. Ballyhale looking for a ninth. Um, Watford looking for its first ever winners. But as we saw in 2016 with um, the Piershig, I suppose our own Kula in 2017, it's not like these famines can't be ended. And we've seen a recent history of it. So I'm sure there's no reason that Ballygunner can't, don't think that they can't run into, roll into town and get it done. 
No, I'm sure they do. And they like getting over that Munster uh, bridge a couple of years ago, beating the Pierce was big for them. Then getting over the semi final kind of bridge the last day and getting through to the final for the first time. I don't think there'll be, I definitely don't think there'll be any fear or anything like that or any inferiority complex going into the final. They obviously played Bally, Bally Hale a couple of years ago, which we'll go into as well. They know what they're coming up against. Like, I was looking back at that game last night. Like, Bally Gunner were leading at half time in that game. You know, they've been ahead against Ballyhale. And there's a, as we'll talk about in a while, there's a fair few personnel changes. And I'd say Bally Gunner have gotten a good bit stronger even since then. So, no, I, I do think they'll really fancy this. And it was interesting to hear, I, I thought Stephen O'Keefe was quite clever in his media dealings yesterday, just even saying that, like, the pressure is not on them now. He feels it's only a matter of time. Even if, you know, they don't get over the line on Saturday, they will get over, they w- they're going to be there for a long, long time. The only thing I'd say about that is it's smart as well in that he's just he's trying to deflect the pressure of small which is what you do. You wouldn't you're not going to come in and say we have to win this. All of a sudden then there's a bit of anxiety almost around it. You play best when you're you have that bit of anxiety but that bit of freedom as well. And I think uh, where better to kind of show that kind of freedom I suppose than in the the wide open confines of Crow Park. And a Crow Park is so Adds even more to this as well. Bally Gunner, best performance we've seen in the last couple of years in the park down at Parky Cueve against Kilmallock when they just opened them up. They will love Crow Park. Bally Hale, it's a second home to them at this stage. When was the last time Bally Hale have been beaten in Crow Park, Shane? There, there's a question for you. I do, I do not have an answer. Do you know? Uh, not off, not off the top of my head, but like they were beaten by, they were beaten by Owlert down in Kilkenny. They were beaten by us down in Kilkenny, and they were beaten by Portumna in Turles. So, I think you're gonna, I think you could be going back decades to find the last time they were beaten in an All Ireland Club final or in a in a game in Crow Park. Have they lost an All Ireland Club final? I feel they, like they've they're... lost one. Yes, they've played nine and they've won eight, which is spectacular. And I think that defeat. It was definitely 70s or 80s. You'd see it there. I think it was against uh, Cork champions. Um, and it was one of their early final appearances. But they've won the last eight finals they've been in. I'm, I'm actually just going to look it up as we're, as we're talking right now and try and figure out when that was. Okay, so they lost an all Ireland final to BlackRock in 1978-79. That was their haven't first lost symbol. one since. That's not bad, is it? Haven't lost haven't the final lost in 44 years. Guess what the score like? Well, what's the point in guessing? BlackRock 5-7, Bally Hale 5-5. I mean, what a scoreline. You don't see too many scorelines like that these days. No, definitely not. Um, but they, like Paddy Hale's record is phenomenal. I think uh, I think Saturday will be their 30th game to win in a row, or their 30th game in the unbeaten streak, shall we say, should they do it. Um, then you throw in the 50-year anniversary of the club. Um, like There's so much on the line for them on Sunday, or Saturday, I should say. So Yeah, so that's since the, the amalgamation of... Uh, Knock Moylan, Knock Topher, and Bally Hale. So the club is in existence in this iteration for 50 years, and they're looking to win a ninth All Ireland. So every five and a half years, they're going winning an All Ireland club title, which is nuts. To ask you about that game from 2019, my memory, and I kind of mentioned this to Stephen O'Keefe, who we'll, we'll hear from shortly, was that Bally Gunner had themselves in a right little spot. It was a sort of a short puck out that somebody then messed up, which gifted maybe a goal or a score to Bally Hale that they did gifted a score or two to Bally Hale that turned the game completely is is that what happened yeah that's that's kind of pretty much it it and Bally Bally Hale were under pressure and then they just all of a sudden they smelled blood a bit and uh it was on Cody I think was I don't know, he ended up in an awful lot of space for a goal at one stage. Mm. And if you if you remember back at it, I remember just Bally Gunner defenders like just chasing back after him in vain and there was so much space in the Bally Gunner defence which I don't expect to see on Saturday now, I have to say. Um, but that was that was kind of it. Bally Hale smelt blood and they went for the shroud and having been one down at the break, they won by five and won comfortably enough by five, you'd have to say. Owen Cody had a goal chance at the end, opted to tap it over, could have absolutely, could have, you know, buried Bally Gunner at the time. But um, yeah, and I think Bally Gunner have learned an awful lot since then and they've learned an awful lot from their defeats. That defeat to Bally Hale and then the Bursa Lee defeat as well. Yeah, absolutely. Richard Hogan says matchups are intriguing. Don't expect Ronan Corcoran to make it. We'll need Darren Mullen fit. Expect Brian Butler to pick up Peter Hogan. Dylan Mack123 on Patreon says matchups for this game are intriguing. So many key matchups in every line of the field. Now, that's something we're going to uh, go to straight away now because 
I mean, this is just such a such a key part of the whole game is the matchups. If you do want to uh, join us for this part of the show, it'll be patreon.com forward slash our game. So we're finishing up now with the, the free part of the show and we're going to be continuing on on Patreon. Once again, patreon.com forward slash our game. Lots of people joining up there. So do join us there.